the filly drawn the fence, Charmstone. Racing now, Cylinder began brilliantly, landed a half length in front out of the gates, Butch Cassidy there, snapback going forward and Moravia as well, then the filly Charmstone pushing through on the inside of NCAP, further back to Militarise who settles midfield on the inside of Don Corleone, a little bit deep out there is King Colorado together with General Salute who's trying to go around the field improving its spot, Nadal down to the fence and Shinzo's been taken back to last, it's snapback at odds showing the way a half on Butch Cassidy. Cassidy, Moravia takes the sit in third, a half the outside to end cap well positioned, two lengths to the filly Charmstone, a cylinder after the good start, couldn't cross them and now cylinders caught three wide on the outside of Don Corleone, further back than a militarised general salute, King Colorado well back, together with Nadal the fence and Shinzo will have to come wider, snap back leads at the 500 metres from Butch Cassidy end cap pulling three wide, then Charmstone sliding into fourth, further back to cylinder with a back to follow uh, Moravia trying to come off hills at the 350 now they're stretched across the track snap back joined by Butch Cassidy and in cap cylinder starting to hit top gear Moravia hasn't got much room nor Charmstone in cap hits a narrow lead at the 150 in cap from Butch Cassidy cylinder hitting the line hard in cap cylinder militarised late oh barnstorming finished by militarised the late attack diving and I think he got there in the golden rose from cylinder and in cap oh followed by Butch Cassidy Moravia King Colorado Shinzo further back to Nadal Don Corleone snap back and general salute Joe Marrera let the Dundee cult rip and he's bombed them late to win the golden rose what a finish militarise has he won his third group one you bet he has right over the top of them Joe Marrera gets the SOS call from Chris Waller and the team to come down under and reunite with this dual Group 1 winner. So a golden rose is now added to his sires and champagne victories. The Chris Waller juggernaut just keeps rolling along. That is Group 1 win number 151. His third golden rose to go alongside two other beautiful colts, the Autumn Sun and Zoo star. And Jay Marrera, his seventh Group 1 win in Australia. What a performance. Wait till he gets a mile. He's going to be even better, but he savaged the line. I don't know whether he would have won without the blinkers. I think that was a master stroke putting him on. End cap was perfectly ridden there by young Gibbons. He looked all over a winner straightening up when he had a lot to offer. And, oh, it's close. Maybe he just held second, but Cylinder got close with him with a bob on the line there. Butch Cassidy's run a ripper, and that filly had no luck down the straight charm zone. Uh, Chinzo got a mile back, but was good late. Outstanding ride by Joe Marrera. I actually lost sight of him. He, he was starting to come out from behind him. He wasn't going to have any luck. He was up Cylinder's backside and wasn't going to get the room. He had to go back towards the inside. What a run by Cylinder. Three deep, no cover, loomed up like he was going to put him to the sword. Obviously just faded through the line, but back to that man, magic man, Joe Marrera. What a freak. That's why they called on him to come back down and ride militarise. He's only ridden this horse three times. He's ridden militarise feed three times for three Group 1 wins. Outstanding. Well, Chris Waller said the Caulfield Guinness is his race. Maybe he's a clock's plate horse. But now, blinkers on when he's ready to win. He beats NCAP, who gave... The support is a wonderful sight and cylinder as tough as they come to sit wide all the way. Chris Waller wins his third Golden Rose, the Autumn Sun Zoo star and now militarise. What a day to put on the blinkers. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, everything worked out well. He had a nice draw, a uh, nice confident ride from Joe. And um, there was a bit of traffic in front of us yeah. at the 300 metre mark and Joe cleverly uh, weaved the path and and he needed to be digging deep that last 100 metres and he did, he dug really deep. He's only had three rides on the horse now for three big ones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, he's an amazing jockey as are, as are most of our jockeys in Australia as well, what they do week in week out um, but to have the world the world riders of Joe and Ryan here today and that's pretty special um, but I'd like any Sydney jockey that they'll do the job for me but 
Joe, as you said, he's got an amazing record on the horse, and that's why he's come back today. Chris, no one gave this horse a, thec- a second thought in the slipper. He went around 100 to 1, and of course, yeah. uh, he got knocked over. But then he went to the size, and he went around at 20 to 1. Yeah. But he's been a superstar ever since. Yeah, he has. Um, he's been the ultimate professional all the way out. Um, he's just a slow maturing horse who's won two group runs as a two year old so mm. he's obviously very good and um, the world's his oyster mile of the guineas is that where you're going I would say so yeah, yeah. and then even further who knows yeah that's the beauty of young horses they, they're still telling you a lot of things we're learning about them week in week out and mile will be no problem we know that I reckon he sits nicely alongside the autumn sun and zoo star yeah. as far as quality yeah for sure um, they were great colts and they'd they're doing it at stud now as well. So it's an amazing race. And at your home track, it's always a thrill. And Shinzo? Um, nothing went his way, really. He got back. Um, the race just didn't, didn't unfold for him. Uh, we wouldn't be losing sleep over where he finished. He just the, the race just didn't map for him. It was yeah. clearly he had to be where where Militarise was and, and a few of the other place getters. Um, he was sort of chasing him from the 500, which is... Yeah, showing that they're starting to put the foot down and he's covering extra ground and probably just first up as well. Where does that leave him with the Everest? Um, have a good good assessment of the race and have a talk to Cornwall and see where we're at, but I wouldn't be panicking. Okay, well done. Congratulations. Thanks. Thanks. Congratulations, Joey. How good was that, mate? Like, you were tangled up in traffic, but when you got the run, he just exploded. <laughs> Corey, you just described very much how he is during the race, you know? Um, I gotta also mention that at the start of the race, like I had a horse around me which is squeezing, putting one position further back than where I would love to be. Uh, so then from there on, I had to just pray for luck, you know, and uh, the, the luck actually didn't come until late, as you described. So the, until the last for long, I would say I was locked into a box where I couldn't come out. And eventually, a horse that actually was right in front of me started shifting in a little bit, gave me some room to come on his outside, and actually was the horse that I ended up beating. So, do you know, um, as I was saying just now, this horse has been special to me and uh, he's got a place in my heart for sure. Did he always feel like he was going to explode when he got the run or did he lose the bridle a little bit? Honestly, he didn't give me that feeling and that's probably the reason why Chris put the, the blinkers on him. But then, when he approached to the last 150 yards where he got into the clear and then he just accelerated like a, like a champion. So, yeah, it was a, such a nice ride this horse gave to me. You're a freak. Well done. Thank you.